Hello and welcome. My name is John Jordan and this is a video of the talk given at NFT NYC 2020. Uh, and it's a pretty brief talk uh, looking at the overview of dApps and NFTs. Um, so dApps are decentralized applications and NFTs are non-fungible tokens. Kind of we can think of them as unique items that are secured on, on a blockchain. So uh, some most dApps don't use NFTs. Uh, NFTs are uh, particularly prevalent in certain types of, of dApps, and we'll kind of go into that as the talk progresses. Okay, so let's have a quick overview of the dApp ecosystem. So uh, all this data comes from DappRadar, um, dapradar.com, if you want to go and kind of check it out. But what DappRadar does is um, it looks at uh, blockchains that run uh, smart contracts, which are just bits of code that run on blockchains. And all dApps are, are collections of smart contracts that do different things. So what we what DAP Radar does is it looks at these smart contracts, these bits of code, and looks at the wallets that are interacting um, with those smart contracts, the number of wallets, and also looks at the tokens that are flowing um, into and out of these smart contracts. And that's the kind of overview data that we get. So um, for this ecosystem overview, I'm uh, looking at just the three main blockchains. Um, that kind of run smart contracts. There are dozens of them at that radar. Uh, there are 10 that are um, kind of tracked. But the main ones are Ethereum, EOS, and Tron, pretty well known. Um, and what I've done in this graph is I've taken um, the dApps by category across these three blockchains. On the vertical side, um, we've got a kind of view of, of activity. Uh, technically, this is daily active unique wallets. So these are um, wallets that are inter interacting with these smart contracts and they're unique on a daily basis, interacting with each DAP. Uh, and then obviously um, time across the bottom, this is for the last three months. So we can see, uh, looking at category level, that gambling and high risk DAPs are, are the biggest category in total, but ga gaming and marketplace is pretty uh, broadly similar. So about 20,000 daily active unique wallets interacting with DAPs in those categories across Ethereum, EOS and Tron. Have exchanges, decentralized exchanges, uh, smaller and actually kind of declining slightly, um, maybe about 7,000 daily active unique wallets. Other in, in orange, that's kind of like a catch all term for other kind of dApps. And then we have DeFi in green at the bottom. DeFi, decentralized finance, uh, mainly happens uh, on, on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, lots of going on there, very interesting. Uh, lots of actually volume, lots of value going into those, but actually very small numbers of individual users or individual wallets, I should say. Um, so a couple of thousand there. So that, that's the overview. Let's drill down a bit more and look at the these three blockchains in in total uh, and kind of see how these categories kind of play out on those individual blockchains. Obviously, quite quite different consensus models, certainly between EOS and Tron and Ethereum. If we look at Ethereum. We have you know red is is uh, by far and away the biggest category, gaming and marketplaces. You know, that's more than fifty percent of the activity on Ethereum is games and marketplaces. Uh, then next category is gambling and high risk. It's actually quite fairly, fairly sizable, actually. So often uh, underestimated on Ethereum, that gambling and high risk is, is actually quite big, uh, more on the high risk side than the gambling DAP side. Um, and then we have exchanges um, in, in, in third position. Um, if we look to EOS, uh, gaming and marketplace is even, even, even a larger uh, dominance, really. Um, you know, you see, we'd say that that's by far and away the dominant um, category on EOS. Um, it's got some pretty strong games on there, not so strong on the marketplaces because EOS doesn't really have um, a, an NFT model like Ethereum does. So Ethereum has the ERC721 um, as other standards as well. But ERC721 is the basic standard for creating a non-fungible token on Ethereum. Really well understood. Been around for a couple of years now. Um, on, on EOS, there is this D-Goods standard, which is kind of coming to fruition and, and we'll, I'm sure, hear lots more about um, in 2020. But at the moment, still... Um, not so uh, mature an idea of non-fungible tokens on EOS. Gambling and high risk used to be much a bigger, much bigger part of EOS. Um, it's kind of declined during 2019, and then we have some exchanges as well. And then finally, Tron. We can see Tron is is uh, of all these three chains that has the main dominant uh, single dominant sector. Gambling and high risk. I guess that's no surprise if we know anything about Tron. A bit of games, a bit of exchanges, but that's the, the breakdown. And in, when it comes to NFTs. Pretty much all the all the action on uh, on NFTs in the DApp space is all on Ethereum because um, it is the more mature blockchain and has these standards. EOS and Tron um, hasn't happened yet. Not to say it couldn't happen in the future, but 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 hasn't really happened yet um, in the, on the same level. Okay, so I'm going to talk mainly about games because games um, are uh, the biggest, uh, you know, are, are a large category in in all DApps and have the strongest uh, interaction with uh, NFTs. Um, 
and we have this kind of a what may seem like a um you know a, a kind of just just a kind of a silly t term uh, terminology kind of debate um kind of semantics or something like that but but we have this kind of um quite strong even fundamental trend between blockchain games and games using the blockchain. Uh, so what do I mean by that? So a blockchain game is is a game in which everything that happens happens on the blockchain it's running on. So that could be could be EOS, could be um, could be Ethereum, could be you know any blockchain doesn't really matter. Um, but every move you make, um, uh, every kind of uh, every um, kind of purchase, every every kind of trading transaction, that's all logged on a blockchain. So a game that might we could consider that, you know, a lot of the games on Tron do that because Tron's fairly fast. So, so something like EOS Knights, everything you do in that game, every move, every kind of leveling up of a character or items um, happens on the blockchain. So I would consider that a blockchain game. Can be similar on, on Ethereum, and we'll, we'll have a look at a couple of kind of uh, games that, that are, I would consider blockchain games uh, and everything that they do runs on, on Ethereum. And there's no kind of, um, kind of centralized elements to that or, or, or very small ones. Um, the trend we're seeing in, in 2019 and definitely 2020 is games using the blockchain. So what's different there? So games using the blockchain are games that the majority of the game logic and the stuff you do, the gameplay, um, runs on a centralized server. So much like traditional games, you kind of can log in, log in with kind of just web credentials. You don't need a wallet. You can play the game. Maybe it's free to play. Um, maybe not. But but you kind of have the, a similar experience to what you would have with a, a PC or console game um, that doesn't use the blockchain. But then these games use the blockchain for certain elements. So so typically that is the ownership of items, NFTs, that can be used in the game and have um, either kind of kind of um, special powers or enhanced powers or or something something along those lines that kind of that kind of help the improve the game experience for the people who own these things. So you don't need to have NFTs to play these games. You don't even need crypto or a wallet in in, in some cases. Uh, but if you do have, if you go through that kind of process, you, you kind of have the ability to own your game items and level them up. And then if you want to sell them, you can try and sell them on exchanges. So that's really the, the two broad kind of categories. Um, you know, not to say kind of one's better than the other. They're two quite different um, approaches to games. Um, one's kind of a purist one, I guess, blockchain games, and one's a bit more kind of pragmatic um, uh, games using the blockchain. Uh, and as we look through, we'll kind of see where we are at the moment, and and they they actually there's quite different uh, results you, you get taking these different approaches. And maybe maybe the best thing is something in the middle, um, <laughs> whatever we call that. That's just a frame frame what I'm going to talk about. Okay, so the first project we're going to look at is not really a game, um, or is is the the thinnest version we can have of a game. Um, CryptoPunk. So CryptoPunk's been around um, for um, a couple of years now on Ethereum, um, and it's um, I mean, it's, it's more an art kind of collection thing, really. So, so CryptoPunks were created. They are um, 10,000 minted of these CryptoPunks. Never going to be any more made. They're, um, they're just pixel art, 16 by 16, um, procedurally generated heads. They're these little kind of punks, and they have different kind of attributes. Um, and, I mean, you can't really do anything with them apart from uh, kind of trade them. So, so there's no game around it. I mean, obviously, we can kind of make a game and start. We could kind of try and collect ones with VR headsets or try and collect zombies or whatever, or whatever we want to do. Um, but there's no game built into it. All, all it is is a, is a you know a pure NFT um, ownership model. Um, what's interesting um, is uh, during uh, the last year, I've actually seen quite a strong growth of kind of like a doubling um, or more of, of activity in CryptoPunks. There's actually quite a big um, kind of a speculative kind of bubble potentially going on with CryptoPunks at the moment, partly because there's only 10,000, so there can't be any more made. So this is kind of this interesting model where the kind of the market kind of creates value around the ones it thinks valuable. Obviously, there's no inherent value. There's no utility in them. Um, so, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting to see that kind of model uh, coming about. But but if we look on the on the vertical scale here, you know, this is tiny numbers of people. This is at best 30 daily active unique wallets, 30 daily active unique wallets. So tiny, a tiny number of people. Um, are actively trading these things. Um, and if we look at the in red, we see um, how many people actually own, how many wallets actually own these NFTs. So almost 800 people, um, sorry, I shouldn't say people, almost 800 wallets have at least one CryptoPunk in them. So that's um, you know, <laughs> so still not a large number, but much larger than the, than the daily active activity going on there. And this is partly because with blockchain games, you know, it's quite limited what you can do, certainly on Ethereum. Um, and and so people own these things and they view them probably as investments, uh, as kind of speculative things that might be worth more in the future. So they don't do anything with them. They, they maybe don't even actively trade them. They just go, oh, I'll buy some, I'll keep it for a year and see what it's worth then. So we kind of have this kind of, you know, a, a relatively a large ownership uh, pool and, 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 a, and relatively a tiny uh, percentage of those doing anything actively with them. So that's one extreme. 
Um, slightly less extreme, but still fairly extreme, uh, CryptoKitties. So we all know CryptoKitties, um, again, two years old, fairly long term, you know, fairly, um, uh, what's, what's the term? Um, a fairly kind of, uh, I guess, kind of legacy project, project now um, in blockchain space. And we can see here, this is um, just over a year and a half of, of, of activity. Um, first thing to note on the, on the vertical scale is is much bigger uh, numbers here. So we had 30 with CryptoPunks, now we've got 600. So it's clearly much bigger um, as a peak. Um, what, what's happened over the last um, kind of 18 months is, is um, the, the game has gone into kind of decline, at least in terms of daily active unique wallets. So we're down to about 150. But it's pretty steady at 150. So yeah, NFTs are interesting in the sense that they, they have allowed this, this market to kind of sustain itself. It's not gone to zero, like you see in some blockchain games. These people have a lot of value collected in these NFTs, there's new ones they can breed it all the time. And, and, and NFTs are kind of keeping that, that's, that market quite stable. But if we look at how many people actually own these NFTs, sorry, how many wallets own these NFTs, you know, almost 83,000 wallets own crypto, crypto keys. This is because when it launched, it was the whole kind of um, crypto uh, kind of currency uh, bubble. So ETH was, you know, getting on for a thousand dollars. So everyone was like, I've got loads of ETH. I'm really rich. I'm going to buy some of these crypto keys because they're going to be the next kind of boom. So lots of people bought them and they're still sitting in wallets. Maybe they not even accessible now who knows so again i mean even more so than than crypto punks because crypto is you can do a few things with them you know you can't you breed them to get these new ones out um but it's very kind of different in the sense that there's only ten thousand crypto punks you know you can crypto kit is as many as you can make there's, you're gonna hit two million crypto kitties soon because people keep breeding them um so it's a very different model in terms of scarcity um so we have a lot more owners um uh, but still, this very small fraction of, of people actually um, playing. So actually, a smaller fraction compared to um, crypto um, punks. Okay, so th these are the extremes. This is what I would call blockchain blockchain games. I mean, at least on Ethereum, where you have very large, potentially very large ownership um, kind of pools who are interested, probably for speculative reasons, in these NFTs. But it's very hard to build kind of strong uh, games or, or, or kind of meta games or gameplay that that attracts a, l a large percentage of that audience of owners to do anything every day. Um, or even every month. So that's kind of where we are with that. It works in some ways, doesn't work in others. So something like a, a game using the blockchain would be something like Crypto Heroes, again on Ethereum. So this is out of Japan. Um, and we can start to see now on the vertical scale, we're starting to get, I mean, still not big numbers in the in the big scheme, in the big scheme of gaming, but, you know, 4,000 daily active unique wallets. So, that you know, that's another another kind of, you know, another zero on from where we were with um, uh, Crypto Kitties. And what's interesting here is, you know, um, compared to Crypto Kit is my crypto heroes is in fact the biggest blockchain game or the biggest game on, on on ethereum and had really quite strong growth during 2019 so this is the growth um, kind of line we're seeing every every dot is obviously a day and how many wallets um were active there um and when we look at the nft ownership um actually now we see there's more people um, playing this game actively on a daily basis than they are actually own nft so this is kind of the, the, the kind of key point here is because this game is actually the main game play of it is centralized in fact um you can log in as a free-to-play game you don't even need a, a blockchain wallet you can just log in as a guest and play this game just as you would any other normal game any traditional game if you want to you can get more advanced and you can you know have, you have to create a wallet and then you can uh, you know trade these nfts and they help you in the game because they're more powerful and you can trade them and all this sort of stuff um but actually we see you know it's reversed a small fraction of the of the playing base is actually using nfts so it's still you know, a fairly large number. I mean, like 2,300 uh, wallets actually own these NFTs, and that's actually a fairly decent kind of marketplace around trading them. Um, so it's, um, but it's, but it's very different to the kind of the, the pure. The game is the NFT, and everything, all the, all the kind of, um, kind of a uh, kind of juice of the game has to be contained in the NFT, and the, and and the NFT has has a lot of uh, obviously a lot of value. Or the, the everything is is in, 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 encapsulated in the value of the NFT. So there's this kind of more speculative idea. With my crypto heroes, some of them sell um, uh, a fairly uh, large um, ETH total, but there's not the same kind of speculative bubble um, I think that you have around certainly crypto punks at, at the moment. So um, you know two kind of broad extremes there. Um, if we put try and put it all together. So this graph here, vertically now, um, we are looking at daily ETH volume. So some idea of the amount of money going into the system. And then horizontally, we have daily active unique wallets as before. And we can see, I mean, it's very little, to, very hard to see maybe. We have the crypto punk. So there's a crypto punk. And we have this little blue um, line here. So tiny amounts of people. I mean, decent, certainly on a per wallet basis, decent amounts of, um, of, of ETH being spent there. But kind of tiny down here. Then in red, we have crypto kitties. So many more active unique wallets and, and actually some very high volumes going on there. I think this is this a thousand one is when the um, when the dragon 
crypto punk was uh, crypto kitty was sold for for um 600 eth um, so, so we have some decent values there, and, and and this is kind of what we kind of expect for a blockchain game. We have, um, um, you know, small numbers of people, and, and we have some very high kind of values going on there, depending on on the kind of internal mo economy of that of that model. And people are thinking this is going to be a great investment, and and probably the price of ETH kind of plays into that as well. Very different uh, My Crypto Heroes. So in green, we have My Crypto Heroes. Here's, here is Mozart in My Crypto Heroes, um, and we have you know enormous, uh, relatively an <laughs> enormous number of of active wallets playing the game. Um, but in terms of actual kind of value going in there, generally pretty small. Some, 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 sometimes it can be high. I mean, this is a big kind of outlier up here, which I th think was uh, when they were doing some pre-sales and uh, land sales, um, which is a kind of permanent token in the game. Um, actually, a permanent NFT in the game. So you can generate daily kind of some quite high, high uh, values. But actually, on a day-to-day -day basis, there's not a lot going on here, just, just because you know the majority of the people aren't actually involved in the NFT. So um, I guess what we're thinking about is, is, is what kind of game could kind of Get the best of both worlds and kind of sit in this kind of middle space where it has um you know maybe not as, as many users as, as um my crypto heroes but has kind of bigger users and and has kind of uh, lower volumes um but, but but kind of like higher volumes than, than my crypto heroes so i guess that's what we're looking for in terms of a trend um in terms of a conclusion um this is how i see it so i think this this extends to to dApps as well as games you know um if you're a blockchain dap or a blockchain game and, and you're very focused on nfts you potentially have a, high, a large audience of, of owners, your holders, in this case, probably holders of your NFTs, um, because the, the, you've created value and you've kind of locked into the NFT. So the, the value of the experience is kind of locked into the NFT and you're trying to build um, kind of that as, as um, covertly or, or overtly as, as a kind of uh, as an investment that people um, might want to be buying because it can be worth more in the future. Um, but because of the limitations of what you have on the blockchain, it could be different in different blockchains. Uh, obviously, um, that depends on the consensus model, and even with Ethereum, that will be changing, I guess, in future. But at the moment, at least, we have kind of the potential large audience of holders and small active audiences because it's it's very hard to to make the experience enjoyable because everything's on the blockchain. In contrast, uh, DApps and games using blockchain um, potentially have much larger active audiences because you can attract them. You can have a much better kind of UX, much better kind of experience, much more traditional experience, I suppose, in terms of a game or or even a DApp. But, that, but then only a small, potentially, you know, a fraction of those people will actually um, be, be owning your NFTs. Um, in a sense, that's probably more positive because if you have a large audience, then you can then educate them. You can say you love this game or you love this app. Um, and if you buy this NFT, uh, you know, maybe you don't call it an NFT, but you know, that's another issue. Um, but you can kind of educate them why they might want to spend some money buying this thing that they permanently own. And that gives them kind of, you know, additional experience um, or, or fun or, or whatever in the game. So uh, this is kind of, I think, where we are. This is very basic, obviously. And I think for people who are making ga games and dApps and thinking about NFTs, this is the broad um, kind of kind of system at the moment, and, and people need to be aware of that. So that's me. Um, th thanks for uh, watching the video. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at BlockchainGMG. You can email me at john at dapradar. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So this is all about blockchain games and spend a lot of time thinking about that and trying to um, um, put some put some thoughts and some conclusions around what's going on. Obviously, it kind of changes uh, fairly rapidly. <laughs> so um, do subscribe uh, so you keep up to date. But thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon.